Okay guys, it's about 11 o'clock on Tuesday night. We're getting ready for day two of uh, Easy Bread here. The last thing I'm going to do tonight, this has had a really good rise and you can see a lot of the bubbles in there created by carbon dioxide. And I want to slow this down because I, uh, I have an appointment tomorrow. I have a, um, go get some professional services tomorrow. So I want to sort of retard the uh, further uh, acceleration of growth of that yeast, the growth of the yeast colonies. So what I'm going to do is stick it in the refrigerator tonight and then first thing tomorrow I'm going to pop it out and let it warm up the room temperature and then we're going to get on to part two of uh, making the uh, bread. So good night everyone and um, this will be the beginning of part two. We'll see you tomorrow. And boy, is this bread going to be tasty. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to day two of Lazy Bread. Our sum total time that we put on this uh, project is about five minutes right now. And what we need to do, I've taken this out of the refrigerated bowl and taken the aluminum foil off the top. And as you can see, it's still a very liquidy batter. So what we need to do now is we're going to add flour to this so it'll hold the shape of a ball and be able to stretch out and go on the uh, baking pan. If we were to put this on now, it would not be very attractive when we laid it on the baking sheet. It would be blob bread. And people eat with their eyes and they may not be attracted to eating a bread like that. So uh, what we need to do is firm that up by adding enough uh, flour to it to get that uh, into a uh, form that will hold its shape. And that's where we do a little bit of hands-on to add the flour, get it incorporated, and uh, it'll still only take less than about uh, one minute to do that today. So stick with us today. It's uh, going to be easy. It's going to be a busy day. So I love this bread because it allows me to do other things in my day. And yet when it's time to eat and everything, this stuff will be fantastic. Okay, don't go anywhere. Stick here. You want to see the grand finale of Lazy Bread. Rosie okay style. guys, as you look down in the uh, bowl, you can see I have the uh, dough here and it's a very uh, liquidy state. You could almost pour it out. So what I need to do now is gradually add some flour. And I will add that. I have a cup of, uh, another cup of flour. I'm not going to use it all. I'm not really sure how much I'm going to use. This is where a little bit of experience comes and it's still very easy. I'll shake this around the edge. And then I'll actually sit that down and I'll get my hand and I'll scrape around and having that flour in there will prevent that uh, dough from sticking to my hands as I work this around and gather some of that fresh flour that I put in and you'll actually see this start to form into a, uh, into a ball shape. And what I want to do is lift it up, add a little more here. Not a lot more, I'm probably an eighth of a cup I've added here. And you want to incorporate all that flesh, fresh flour in there. Because what's going to happen now is this is going to rise while I get on with my work day. And that fresh flour I've added in will start to allow this bread to hold its shape when it's put on the uh, baking sheet. I'm going to add a little more here. And this is just lovely. And I had a little taste of the dough today, and it's amazing. It tastes so good. The wild yeast that it acquired in the air has soured this off a little bit and created like a uh, sourdough. I'll lift that up. Again, making sure I've got all the uh, all of the dough, all of the flour incorporated, and the uh, it's almost got it there. Okay. Put two hands in and pull it under itself at the bottom. And you know what? You're done. Now all you want to do now, that's a uh, ball that will definitely hold its shape when it's stretched out into a loaf. What we want to do is put that back in the pan and just cover that and we'll revisit this in about two hours. And we'll punch it down, we'll let it rise one more time, then we'll add it to the baking sheet and we'll bake it. Okay, easy. Total time working on this. 
less than one additional minute now. Okay guys, it's a couple hours later. I went out on a few appointments and it's time to now add a little more flour. We're going to do it exactly. It's about two hours later. We're going to add a little more flour. We washed our hands really well. Always make sure you wash your hands. Take off any jewelry, okay, that harbors germs and things. Once again, I'm spraking, uh, sh shaking. I still have this uh, cup of sugar I've been using, a uh, cup of flour I've been using all morning, the high protein uh, bread flour. I've uh, sprinkled a little more around the outside of the uh, bowl of dough and on top of it. And I'm now going to take my hand, work it under again. And it's very important you understand how I'm working it underneath there and picking up that, that flour on the bottom and the uh, flour I added helps it from keeps it from sticking to my hands and working it for a second or two will help warm it up and also adding that little bit of extra flour and you see some nice bubbles in it now that little bit of extra flour will help firm up the consistency of the bread and help it to hold its shape once it hits the pan I'll add a little more now and ultimately by the end of the uh, day you will have used five cups of flour all together in the recipe the four original cups that you started with yesterday and the uh, cup that you used today sprinkling in several times and adding it to the uh, dough ball and by the end of the day we will have used up that cup of flour that we started with this morning and we want this bread to absorb that and then we're going to cover it again and once again we put one more minute of time into it and look at how beautiful it is it's actually shaping it in a ball and we've done none of that tedious sort of uh, kneading or anything we're going to cover it again make sure to cover it good you don't want it to dry out and those yeast are going to be happy because they have that additional uh, flour to chomp on and eat on in there and they're going to be very happy and the rises are going to be faster now we're going to let it rise one more time then we're going to put it on the counter here and we're going to shape it we're going to have the oven preheated and we're going to get to the uh, really fun part of the process which is the actual shaping and baking okay stick with us Okay, we're up on the uh, overhead cam again, and uh, it's nice to do this. I have the tripod sort of set up there, but it gives a great viewing angle here. And you can see I've dusted the countertop with some flour here to keep things from sticking. I'm going to put some flour in the top of the bowl, and you're used to doing this now, sprinkling some flour in there. And by putting that flour in there, it allows you to work your hands without getting them all coated with dough. And this has such glorious bubbles from the uh, no yeast or stuff. Yeast is so happy in there that it's just gone nuts. And we're going to work that in. Still got some residual flour in the bottom. Punch that through now. It's, we're just going to spill it out on the counter. And we're going to work it a little bit on here. And remember, we haven't been kneading at all. We're just turning it under itself really nicely and what we're going to do now is we're going to stretch this out try not to press down too much on it or you'll release a lot of the uh, nice uh, carbon dioxide that the yeast put in, in there and you don't want to do that you want to maintain you don't want to squish this down or anything and then you want to take it like this and just roll it up like this it's like I'm doing here add a little more flour to the uh, counter if you need it I'm so glad to have a granite counter. And then uh, with that underneath, I'm going to pinch it at the ends here. And then I'm going to continue to roll this some more. And you'll see that this actually starts to elongate here. And look at how nice that is. And because I've pinched that, that will hold, uh, that will hold its shape. And you can also push it under some more and do, a, uh, do another pinch if you want here. Pull that together and uh, don't worry if it's not sticking enough of the parts will stick and don't forget to generously flour your surface enough of it will stick that it will really make a nice loaf and you can see pinch it in the ends there 
and you can see how beautiful that is. Push this aside and bring the pan over here. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get the uh, cooking spray out again. And I'm going to give it one chooch right in the middle there, the non-stick spray. And now I'm going to take my loaf here and I'll plunk it right down on the tray like that. And look at that. Look at how nice that is. Now, what you don't want to happen now is you don't want this to dry out. So you can hit this with the cooking spray and then uh, take a piece of foil, a new piece of aluminum foil, and you want to put a loosely cover that because you don't want that to dry out, but you don't want it covered so tight that it won't be able to uh, rise. You don't want it to be impeded in its rise. So we're going to let this rise for about a half hour. I've got the oven on. I do have a convection oven. It actually has a fan that circulates air in there. And the beauty of that is you don't have any spots. Uh, most, not, no, most ovens are notorious for hot spots, but not this one. Because the fan circulates the air, you get really even cooking. All right. You can see that beautiful loaf. And we're just going to let her rise here for its final rise. And then we're going to pop her in the oven. Remember, highest heat setting. Let this rise for about a half hour, okay?